insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Peter. This one's for you. Oh, well. Welcome to Insights and Entertainment, Episode 16, Beyond the Edge. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my lovely and talented co-host, Michelle Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing this week, dear? I'm doing okay. Okay, (laughs) okay. It was a long week. Yeah. (laughs) So, as we saw from our opening scene there, uh, Galaxy's Edge has officially opened. Did it? I didn't hear anything about it. Um, <laughs> we'd, while we did not watch the dedication live, we did see the recording, which is what right. that scene was from. Right, right. Um, I was shocked that they were able to get uh, Harrison Ford. Yeah, to that was that was a nice add-on bonus. Yeah, yeah, yeah that so was nice. The time they messed the timing up on the actual, eh, you know, uh, fireworks. The stuff launch stuff happens, but you but, know. Uh, you know, Harrison Ford was a good sport there. Oh, absolutely. Um, <laughs> Love the dedication of Peter Mayhew who mm-hmm. he had. That was very touching. Yeah, and uh, Mark Hamill actually had tweeted as well. He said when Harrison did that, in the back of his head, he was saying Kerry should be here too. So yeah. it, was, yeah. it was a touching, you know, tribute for, for both of them. So big event, obviously, in entertainment, in absolutely. Disney, in Star Wars. Um and we've got a lot of news on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, now that people are actually able to take pictures and look at it mm-hmm. and come out with information. Right. So uh, Disney Detective will have a lot of that in it today. Just a bit. <laughs> uh, we also have some Toy Story information in Disney Detective. And then we'll move on to our entertainment news uh, with uh, the follow-up on a, a previous mm-hmm. um discussion we had on the new batman then we will talk a little bit about uh lucifer star uh tom ellis uh and some uh statements that he's made regarding uh what he would like to see with his wedding presence mm-hmm. and uh some additional information from the entertainment world uh concerning some recent abortion laws in georgia mm-hmm. Uh, we will then finish up with uh, our insightful picks of the week, as usual, and uh, some afterthoughts from there. Sounds good. Uh, we all set to start. Let's get it going. All righty. Go for Disney Detective. So unless you've been living under a rock for the last couple of months or just within this past week, As we've mentioned, Star Wars Galaxy Edge has finally opened. Um, And overall, the fans obviously are people who, you know, these are people who have been waiting 40 years for a a theme park land, you know, dedicated to Star Wars. So everybody has been very positive about it. Um, And, and... You know, there there's also been the the criticism as well, and and some of the criticism isn't really all that bad in the grand scheme of things. Uh, so the one article that I found, um, <clears throat> excuse me, was um, um, 
by a, a person who said that, you know, while the land wasn't 100% complete, it, you know, when you walked in, you instantly felt like you had left Disneyland and you were now finally immersed in the Star Wars universe. And that's exactly what Disney <clears throat> was going for. So it seems like they Absolutely. hit the, the mark on that one. Right. So, you know, he, the, he, he said that just looking, you know, standing and looking at the Millennium Falcon, he would have paid to get in just to do that, if, yeah. if nothing else. Like, that was just awe-inspiring. Um, and he said that... You know, the cast members are truly that. They are cast members. Um, they are characters as, you know, citizens of the planet Batu, and they greet you with bright suns during the day and in the evening, rising moons. You know, so it, it, they're very much, you know, in character. Um, and that <laughs> he even made a comment about, you know, even going to the, the restroom was kind of like, wow, this is what it would be like if I was in Star Wars, yeah. you know, because just everything is completely themed. And you have to use your imagination because you never see anyone use the right, restroom Right, you never saw Star anybody Wars. using the bathroom. Uh, he said his absolute favorite thing was visiting Savi's workshop, which is the store building experience where you get to assemble your very own lightsaber. Now, he said it's not for everyone because obviously the cost, which we already knew, was about $200. So in the article, it says it's $200 just to get in and it includes your lightsaber. Right. And so you're paying for the whole experience. Right. So it's a whole experience. And the other thing, too, which I thought was interesting, was that for the $200, you get to have the experience. You end up making the lightsaber at the end. And only one other person gets to go with you. You only, right. so, you know, so for $200, it's, it's basically, you know, two people. And what he had said, um, it's very different from uh, the Harry Potter experience at Universal uh, when you go to um, to make your wand, basically anybody can go into the store. Even if you're not making the wand, you can you can watch it. So it's almost like a very sacred experience right, right. to go in and and make this. And there's actually another Disney friend of mine um, who went and did it, obviously, and just posted a picture like that was it. He didn't even have a video of it. So I don't know if they're not allowing you to, to do videos yet of it or if he was just doing it more so like, hey, if you're going to go do it, I want you to experience it right, on your own. Right. But like, hey, this is really cool. Yeah. Um, so that I thought was, was cool and figured like when we finally get there, we're probably going to be spending $400, if not $600, because, you know, we might all want our own lightsaber. You know? That's, well, I'm getting mine. I can't speak for the rest of you <laughs> right? folks. Well, if we all want to go, we have to at least pay 400 because, you know, I'm not going to get left out, and I think she, she'd want to, you know, she'd want to go. Um, so, yeah, so he said um, they do it in a small group. It's usually only 14 people at a time, so it's very intimate. And, you know, it was just, he said it was downright spiritual. So, you know, if but you're... he also said the wait for that's probably going to be fairly Oh, absolutely. And, and, and I could see, like, during the period now where they have the reservations, like unless you have a reservation, you can't get in to star Wars land. I can't imagine what it'll be like once they lift. Yeah. Like, is it that are you going to need a fast pass to go spend $200? You might, or they might take a reservation and, you know, and say, Hey, you know, which would, would make sense. Like, Hey, don't wait in line right. here. Come back. You are, you know, like the Bibbidi body, Bobbity boutique. Right. I could totally see that. That's you what know. it looks like. It's it's really it's a boutique experience right. for Star Absolutely. Wars. Absolutely. And especially because again, it's not the, you know, oh, pick out your wand or whatever. You know, right. it's a much more um thing. Um and then he goes on to talk about what wasn't so good. Um, and he said it was actually Smuggler's Run, which was the ride. Mm -hmm. And he said it, it wasn't that it was horrible. It it was fun. But the thing is it's a six person ride and you have Two people that are pilots, and basically one is doing horizontal and one is doing vertical, and you kind of have to work together to right. be able to fly the ship. So if you're sitting next to somebody that you don't know, or you're the type of person that doesn't know how to really communicate well with strangers, it's going to be a very awkward experience, and you're going to crash a whole lot. Right. Um, but, you know, fortunately, you know, since he was there during a press you know, uh, tour, he was able to go on it multiple times where, you know, I don't know, the average person's probably not going to be able to go on it 
multiple times for a well, very long time. Well, and the other thing time. is, you're one of six people there. Right. The other two people basically just have buttons on the side to push. Right. There's really not a whole lot Right. The other two, you know, and, and that could be, you know, for somebody that doesn't want to, you know, just wants to enjoy it. Those other four seats, you know. But the fate of your ride is up to the two people in the front right, who are exactly. flying the thing. Right, And that's the thing is, you know, are you going to end up, you know, later on like, hey, have you been on this before? Do you know how to fly this thing? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> You'll be cherry picking you know. your, your, your pilots. <laughs> right, exactly. So, you know, he said it was it was funny, but, you know, especially if you've, you know, waited hours to get on it, it can be a little, you know, uh, disappointing. Um, but he said, you know, other than that, the rest of the land, you know, was awesome. Um, the biggest thing is that, you know, obviously it's not complete. You still have Rise of the Empire, which, which takes up a huge chunk of the land there. Right. So. And he even said you could kind of see, you know, you, you obviously know where it's going to be. And when you look at the map, you go, oh, that's why that's there. It, it kind of is a direct line. But, you know, the one thing he said was that, you know, it, he in a way he felt it was kind of half empty because, again, it's not complete. But that's really the only thing that's missing from it. It's not like. Right. And, and because it's a railless um, ride, mm -hmm. it takes up a lot of room because it moves. Right. So there has to be, it's not like the, like the smuggler's run. Right. It's a fixed ride. Right. It's a motion simulator. You're not, right. you're not moving around outside mm -hmm. of that area. Right. So smuggler's run takes up a fairly large chunk of real estate in the park. Right. So, and it's still a couple of months out from it, you know, being open. So I'm sure once that opens, then, it, you know, Galaxy's Edge will be more, crazy than you know than it already is but everything um, else is open your shops right. your all restaurant, the shops are open, open all the food you know you, you know various different people said you know the food has been really good the shopping stuff has been really good another article that i saw this morning that talked about um yesterday's uh, grand opening was that it actually went rather smooth for the most part. Um, you know, they, there weren't too many hiccups because you had to kind of go through, they had an area where, okay, if you're here to buy merchandise first, you know, there's this area to go buy merchandise. If you need to get your wristband for the eight o'clock opening, you have to go here and it moved really quickly. Like it looked like a big horde of people, but they actually, you know, moved really quickly. And then when it opened, you know, it really didn't look all that crowded for the most part. Well, and it wasn't because they regulated it so it right, wouldn't be. Right, right. And, and I think that's good on Disney's part for... Yeah, I mean, kudos to them for, for doing it right and not jamming it full of people. Right, right. And uh, the one thing that I thought was funny in the First, one... I can say that now because we have no intention of going. Because so. we're not going for like two years. I'd be ticked if I was maybe there and I couldn't Maybe a year and a half. In. I don't know. Maybe we can get in a year. I don't know. We'll say. Let's, um, let's see. <laughs> figure if I... Tease you a little bit. Here's Two years was the target. Two years was the target. Um, but what was interesting in his article, which kind of leads us uh, to the next story, was talking about all the different Easter eggs that there are, you know, throughout Galaxy's Edge, that they did such a great job putting right. little things all throughout. Well, like even we saw when they did the the one walkthrough that we watched mm -hmm. prior to the uh, to the unveiling. They had the uh, helmet with the blast shield and the right. training drone that Luke used mm -hmm. in uh, A New Hope. Right. You know, just sort of sitting on the shelf yeah, there in the, on, in the area. just sitting on the shelf. Um, so leading to, to our next story, BuzzFeed had a, a little article, and I'm sure everybody else, you know, is, is going to be coming up with that uh, too. But it was 24 mind-blowing details and Easter eggs at Star Wars Galaxy's Edge that will make you say, I love this. Um, and we're not going to go through, you know, all 24, um, but the first one uh, that you can see um, is the cargo ship uh, in the docking bay um, of the food and cargo has three containers and each has different numbers on it, 77, 80, and 83, which obviously represent the years of the original trilogy. Um, so, again, cute little thing, like if you saw it, you might not even... You know, realize it, but yep. again, for the the Star Wars fans who know, 
you know, Disney is awesome at um, doing Easter eggs. This is a nice one. Uh, the the next one, uh, which was one that you caught when we were watching uh, a video uh, that somebody did for Smuggler's Run. And it was funny because the one video I saw, I actually thought it was a real person yeah. at first. And then when we watched a second video, you realized it's an audio animatronic. And it's a damn awesome audio yeah. animatronic because... You know, the way very he, animated, he was very moving realistic. and everything. And his name, I'm not even going to try it. I'll it's let Honda you. Honda Onaka. Thank you. Uh, he's the pirate who gives you your mission. And he's from Clone Wars and Rebels. So yeah. if you're, you know. So um, that was another thing, too, where I read. It was like, it's not only the movies. It's not only, you know, the cartoons. It's even the books, you know. So, you know, they captured a little bit of, of everything. Um then, you know, a couple of other things like there are some droid marks on the ground right. and one of them and it is R2-D2's, you know, droid marking. So they, they used R2-D2 to make it. Um, there's uh, one of the toy shops has a wooden stormtrooper doll that sits on top, uh, sits in the shop. And it's the replica of the one that uh, Jin had in, from, uh, from Rogue, Rogue One. one. Um, so that was kind of that was kind of cute. Um, then there's also a toy replica of Jabba the Hutt's sail barge from Return of the Jedi that kind of sits on a ship, um, just kind of, you know, in the background. Uh, like I said, lots of different things that are just kind of hidden. Um, you know, uh, there's one store that's kind of like the antique replica store, mm -hmm. um, and everything on the bottom of the store you're able to actually purchase. That's where the one R2-D2, I think is like $25,000, but like everything that's up top is all, you know, kind of movie props, but not. Um, then there's also, you know, one of the coolest hidden gems was in one of the shops, there's two marionettes in the corner and it's Obi-Wan and Darth Vader in their final duel. So I thought that was, you know, that was kind of neat. So again, there's probably a gazillion... Easter eggs that not everybody has even realized yet, yeah. but it looks like every corner of, you know, the place. So uh, if you're not familiar with it, there's uh, an author who his name I can't think of off the top of my head, but he came out with a couple of different books about the hidden Mickeys right. that are all throughout, <clears throat> excuse me, Disney World and Disneyland, where the Imagineers actually intentionally put a hidden Mickey someplace, you know, for you to find. And he kind of created a Steve Barrett, I want to say, is possibly his name. Um, and uh, so he actually came out with a couple of books about it and kind of created a um, scavenger hunt, you know, for, for you to go and find. I'm sure at some point somebody's going to come out with a Star Wars Galaxy's Edge Easter egg, you know, hunt uh, for... Um, for Galaxy's Edge, for for Disney World and Disneyland. So again, cool little you know side thing that you know while you're sitting and waiting to to do other things, you can go and and kind of search things out. Um, and that's that's typical Disney. I mean, oh, Disney absolutely. does that just to give you the the ambiance and the feel and uh, the the authenticity. I mean, they do that in other parts of the area, like for instance. Uh, in Fantasyland, you see the carriage wheels that are in the cement as though they're paths in the in the dirt and stuff like that, and the horse, the hoof marks and stuff like that. Um, so, I credit Disney with sticking to you know as authentic, oh, authentic absolutely. as you can, absolutely. which is really great. Yeah, and by the way, his name is Stephen Barrett. So Stephen Barrett, okay, the Hidden Mickey. I knew, I, I thought it was. Um, and then another little cute story uh, that I saw, which, you know, we've been talking about Toy Story coming out um, in the next couple of weeks, is that AMC actually is going to be hosting an eight-hour Toy Story marathon um, that'll actually be on the 20th, which is the day uh, before Toy Story um four actually comes right, out. Right. So I guess they're doing it as a combination. Um, so they said that select shows will be actually showing the first three, followed by obviously a premiere of the fourth. 
Um, the movie marathon will run eight hours and 44 minutes. Um, and that fans that attend will actually get an exclusive Woody pin. Um, and some collectible trading cards as all, uh, and some special concessions will also uh, be offered during that. So um, I know, what was it, when it was Toy Story 3 came out, we did a back-to-back? I think we did, yeah. I think it was two. It, it obviously had to be when, when 3 came out. I think they only did um, Toy Story 2 first, and then right after it was followed with Toy Story 3. So we did that. So that was... You know, I think two was kind of our our max for for Disney movies, yeah. you know, in a row. Yeah. But if you're a diehard, you know, Toy Story fan, this might be, yep. you know, something for you to do. Or if you have young kids who, you know, have only seen Toy Story one or two or even three, you know, at home and have never experienced it in the theater. And it's the, it is the kind of movie you want to see in the theater. It's yeah. worth seeing in the theater. Yeah, absolutely. So I I know I'm excited. I'm probably more excited than the child than the, is. Than twelve year old. Yeah. yeah, but that's just because you know Toy Stories, <laughs> Toy Story. Yeah. <laughs> so that is it for my Disney detectives, my dear. Okay. Very good. Very cool. Very exciting. So our first story in our entertainment news this week is a follow-up on uh, our news from a few weeks ago regarding the new Batman. Why don't you tell us about that, dear? Sure. So what we had talked about a couple of weeks ago was that uh, the new um, director uh, of the new Batman trilogy called The the Batman. The Batman. The Batman. um, They were eyeing up uh, Robert Pattinson from Twilight fame uh, to had the uh, to be Bruce Bruce Wayne in the new uh, version and now Warner Brothers has actually approved it I guess it was still under negotiations at the time um, so Warner Brothers has approved him to be the star of the Batman which will be a trilogy of films that Matt Reeves will direct later this year um, Pattinson had been considered the front runner because the filmmaker liked him uh, but the studio was actually torn between him and another actor uh, Nicholas Holt Um, and they kind of wanted to do, um, tests between the two to see, you know, who they, they kind of like. Gotta see who looks good under that cowl. Uh, Yeah. And, um, so it was a big decision and they actually went with obviously Pattinson. Um, Holt is actually, um, reprising his role in X-Men First Class, uh, Dark Phoenix, uh, so he's, you know, so it's not like he, he lost out to anything. He He's still doing other right, stuff. Right. Um, and that the film is going to be produced by Dylan Clark, who produced Reeves's film Planet of the Apes. Okay. Um, so the idea is that these films will be kind of the formative years of Batman. So they wanted somebody that was in their 30s. So, so it's like the post-Gotham years. Yeah. So okay. it's like, okay, Gotham ended, you know, kind of, you know, what happened in the Gotham show. Okay, now he, you know, that was kind of his 20s. Now, I hope they tie it in to Gotham, at least, as that far as the storylines. Nice, but, and weave, you know. Weave that whole tapestry of stories yeah, together. Yeah, so. They're springboarding off of a great base oh, to do it from. totally. Um, They did say that the film is... Uh, no way a carry on from the work that Ben Affleck did as the older Batman um, in Batman vs Superman and, and Justice League. It's basically you know like a prequel to that, but kind of a hey Gotham ended. Now how did you get to be forty something? Like right. where's that you know thirty year old you know sure, Bruce Wayne sure. dealing with with everything? So should be should be interesting cool. to to see where they go with that. Very cool. Uh, So then in other news, which, you know, this kind of warmed my heart. (laughs) Uh, So Lucifer star Tom Ellis wants wants Planned Parenthood donations instead of wedding gifts. Uh, So he uh, had announced earlier uh, this year that he was engaged to uh, his fiancee, Megan Openmeyer. And they basically both went to Twitter and said, you know, people have been asking us what you can get us for wedding gifts. How about make a donation to Planned Parenthood 
you know, in, in our honor. Um, they've been dating since 2015 and have been open about their engagement since actually last October. Uh, they don't have a wedding date set, but this was kind of a nice little, um, you know, feel good story about them yeah. um, with all the different controversies, obviously, that are, that are going around, you know, um, in celebrity news and in the world of entertainment. You know, this kind of, you know, made me like him even more. Sure. So, yeah, that's, that's very cool. Yeah. So and then kind of leading up to this, um, as you know, some of you might know or not know, there is a lot of filming that is done in Georgia for various TV shows, different movies have uh, been done there, um, game shows, you know, a lot of, a lot of TV production has been, has been done in Georgia, and right now there's a lot of controversy with that. There's a lot of celebrities who have now come out and said that they will not work in Georgia because of the new abortion bills that are going into place in Georgia. Um, so you have different television shows that, once their contract is up, are now starting to kind of scout out other locations. Um, there are certain celebrities, like I said, who, you know, if they get hired for a project and they find out it's in Georgia, they, uh, you know, will turn it down. And a story that actually came out just the other day was that Disney, Netflix, and Warner Media say that they're going to start pushing their productions out of Georgia now because of everything. Um, and they're actually three of the world's biggest entertainment companies. And like I said, <clears throat> once the new uh, law goes into effect, they've basically decided um, that they're going to, um, that they don't want to support the state of Georgia anymore because of that. Um, and actually a fourth company, Comcast, uh, Comcast NBC Universal says that um, if when these uh, anti-abortion bills are upheld, that they're going to probably make the decision also to move out of Georgia um, as well. So the state is a big hub, like I said, for the entertainment industry. Um, and obviously they get a nice little tax break from, from Georgia, you know, because of it. And now these companies are starting uh, to feel that the incentives just aren't enough because of you know, how they feel it's an anti-woman right. bill. Um, and even if you step back from from the controversy of the legislation itself, mm -hmm. this is how the free market works. Mm -hmm. You know, people, I'll be the first one to tell you that if the law is passed that you don't like, you need to vote and let your representatives absolutely. know. You don't always have the option to do that mm -hmm. if you're an outside entity who's working in that environment. Right. So what you can do is vote with your dollar. Right. You know, if there's a business that has a policy that you don't approve of or like mm -hmm. or agree with, then you take your business elsewhere. Absolutely. And that's how they, they and you that's know, how accept the consequences. Basically, you know, that they're there's, you know, that the strict new law, you know, <clears throat> is set to go into effect January 1st. Um, so. People are, are, okay, well, we'll stay here, you know, until then. Or if we can get out now, we're, we're going to get out. Right. Um, you know, and Netflix and Disney, they have deep pockets. Yep. And obviously, you know, if they are going to boycott Georgia, that's going to hurt, you, and, know, you know, Georgia in the long run. From, not to get political, but from a political standpoint, mm -hmm. I would much rather see corporations go this route and exercise their right to patronize a certain state or county or whatever, mm -hmm. rather than the typical, you know, political contributions and by a politician. Right. You know, this is allowing a company like Disney to use its power and influence mm -hmm. in a way that is less corrupting. Mm-hmm but still gets the job done, you know? Right, right. And it, and it definitely speaks volumes to to the whole, you know, obviously this is a very controversial topic, no matter what. There's, you know, and nobody's right and nobody's wrong with this. Right. It's, it's more you need to respect a person's wishes, but not, you know, you, you can sit and have a debate with somebody for, 
you know, from here to kingdom come and you're not going to be able to sway, you know, if you feel a certain way, you feel a certain way, but right. it's the, it's the amount of respect and integrity that you give the other person, you know, that you hope in return. And sometimes it, it gets nasty. Yeah. Um, and but I think this, I think this, this uh, story sort of transcends the topic at hand. In this mm -hmm. case, it yeah. happens to be anti-abortion laws. In another case, it might be gun laws right. or it might be immigration laws. Right. But I think the important takeaway here is the fact that if a government entity is doing something mm -hmm. that you feel is unjust or amoral, you can influence that, right. not, not necessarily through the mm -hmm. voter, through buying a politician, but by taking your business elsewhere. Right. And as a result, unfortunately, it hurts that community, mm -hmm. but that community then it's incumbent upon them to, to, make, elect, to make the change and mm -hmm. to elect the officials into office who are going to make the decisions that benefit the community. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there are plenty of other places that are going to be very welcoming to, Absolutely, yeah. you know, and, and, and yeah, it, it's, it's a shame that it's going to hurt the local, you know, the industry, the carpenters and, and, you know, the food industry yep. and the hotel industries. And, but it's you not know. Disney that's hurting them. Mm -mm. It's your politicians that's right. hurting them. And that's your, who you need to take it out. Right. On. Exactly. So, it, you know, it, it's, again, it's a shame, you know, but look at, you know, unfortunately yesterday there was another mass shooting in Virginia beach. It's the 150th shooting in our, in our country on the 150th day of the year. Yeah. And, you know, hopes and prayers don't do anything. You need to have action. So in some cases, you know, here's an action that companies are, are starting to take. Now we need, you know, media or somebody to, to take action, you know, about gun control. Yep. Um, so again, this was, you know, again, there are people that agree and disagree and again, you're, you could talk till, you know, the cows come home as well. Um, you know, there's no right or wrong, but obviously. Well, the, you know, the important thing is acknowledge that there's an issue. There mm -hmm. may be multiple ways to solve it. There mm -hmm. may be different ways to solve Absolutely. it. Absolutely. But until someone shines a spotlight on the fact that there is an issue and we all agree that there's an issue, nobody's mm -hmm. going to do anything about it. Right. Right. And I think this kind of action this, here. Yeah, exactly. This shows, again, like the power the, of the media. The, added, the old something. adage of it's not a problem until it's your problem. Right. This type of thing makes it your problem, mm -hmm. makes it the voter's problem at this right. point in time. Absolutely. So, cool. so very cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that was all we had for our entertainment news this week? Yep. Awesome. Let's move on to our insightful picks. And I defer to you, my dear. Why, thank you, my love. So, obviously, we had already mentioned Tom Ellis um, before, so can't do that without using his show uh, as my insightful pick, which is Lucifer. Um, I was a fan of Lucifer back when it was on Fox. Uh, it ran for three seasons on Fox, and then uh, Fox actually had canceled it in May of 2018, um, and a month later, Netflix decided, nope, we're going to pick it up for a fourth season, um, which made fans very, very happy, and it was actually released a year uh, later from that. Uh, it actually just came out uh, the beginning of May um, for a fourth season. Now, uh, when it was on Fox, it was actually uh, 22 episodes, Obviously, Netflix usually does shorter seasons, so the season um, is 10 seasons. Um, 10 shows. 10 shows, I'm sorry. 10 seasons would be 10 fantastic. seasons in one season. That's <laughs> that would be awesome. there. Well, actually, that was one of the, uh, uh, one of the articles uh, I read. Tom Ellis actually talked about, even though it's a shorter season than what they're used to, they were actually able to put more into each episode. Yeah, because you don't have the production and time constraints. You don't constraints. have the, the time constraints. So, you know, every episode was almost like 
two episodes. Um, obviously, because it's on Netflix, they're allowed to show a little bit more than they would on network television. So there were a couple of um, little gruesome scenes that were like, oh, that was kind of shocking. I didn't kind of expect it, but wasn't like over the, the top. Then there was the orgy pants. <laughs> there were the orgy pants. That was probably my, my favorite episode, I'll say. Um but um, Tom, Tom Mellon says now America's ass, right? Right, right. And that was actually you had told me about that, which I thought was funny. So uh, if you've ever if you've never watched the show, uh, basically, it's Lucifer. that That's the character that he plays, who is the original fallen angel who has become um, dissatisfied with his life in hell. And he decides to abandon hell and decides to go to Los Angeles, of all places. Um, not, not really much of a change. Though. No, not really. So he indulges in his favorite things women, wine, and song, until a murder happens right outside of his nightclub. Um, and for the first time in a billion years, the murder kind of awakens something unfamiliar in his soul, and he kind of has compassion and sympathy, and he kind of builds this bond with um, a homicide detective named Chloe, and they develop this kind of friendship relationship where he realizes there's something kind of special about her. He has some sort of, she has some sort of effect on him, but he just never really, you know, has been able to put it into to words. And it's like and the buddy cop shows of the eighties only on kind steroids. Of, yeah, basically. Um, and you know, so then he, you know, ends up becoming a, um, consultant for the LAPD. Um, so that's kind of, you know, funny to see, you know, he uses, you know, his power to kind of get people to confess things. Um, but it, it is kind of that typical uh, cop drama, you know, there's always a murder or something happening and okay, who's the one that did it? Um, you Various know, supernatural friends. Flow there's, into it. Yeah, basically, you know, he has his demon, uh, you know, his one demon sidekick who's there. And then you have his brother who shows up in this season. You had a, a sister that showed up and Eve shows up. Um, so you have, you know, various supernatural celestial people, you know, that kind of come in and out. And as the season series goes on, certain mortals find out, you know, who he really is and, you know, the Could aftermath of, Satan? <laughs> you know, and then some people are kind of like, oh, you yeah, know, I don't, I don't, you know, so not everybody knows, but some people know. Um, there's, you know, some comedic, um, you know, aspects to it. And there's some serious, you know, heartfelt, you know, parts as well. So, again, I was a fan of the original and, you know, when Netflix took it over, it, it's very seamless. Um, actually, the first episode was kind of, you know, the first like five minutes was kind of a recap. So if you never watched the original, you know, you could, you know, kind of start from the beginning and kind of, you know, understand some of, you know, what was going on. It looks like it's taken a bit of a darker turn. Yes, it definitely. And, and I think that's because Netflix... You know, it's on Netflix, so they, they can do a little bit more darker stuff. He's, he's dealing more with, you know, his his inner term, turmoil and, you know, how come he is who he is. Right. You know, whereas, you know, on the, the I think Fox it show. it gives the show a little bit more depth mm -hmm. as well, yeah. which is nice. Yeah, I think there are a lot of people that, you know, kind of watched the original and were kind of like, eh, it's okay. So, you know, maybe if you watched it and you weren't really sure... Give a couple of episodes of, of the new one, and, and maybe uh, it'll surprise you. Very cool. Very cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So with a break in tradition, I am also going to go with a Netflix show. <gasps> um, but sticking with my boring entertainment, <laughs> it is a documentary. <laughs> Uh, this one I actually discovered last night. Oh, wow. Uh, was recently added to Netflix. Uh, it was a documentary series produced in 2018. They've got a single season so far uh, called Empire Games. Uh, they interview uh, scholars. They do some dramatic reenactments. Uh, they bring to life the origins and history-making achievements of the world's great ancient empires. Hmm. Uh, it addresses major empires like Rome, Greece, Egypt, you know, all the usual suspects. Right, right, say. right. 
but it also looks at some less explored empires like um, the first uh, emperor of China or the Celtic tribes, uh, the Germanic tribes uh, led by Vercingetorix and Boudicca, which uh, we had talked about uh, in the past. Mm -hmm. um, and they even delve into empires from South America like the Aztecs. Oh, so okay. It's, it's a it's a pretty wide variety that they do. Um, there's six episodes right now that they've got. Uh, it's all very well researched. Most of it, I mean, if you're if you're a history buff like me, you've you've probably uh, learned a lot of what they do. But they 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 take it in a direction where they're you're almost learning the personalities. Oh, okay, interesting. Um, you learn like the the one episode with Rome. They talk about uh, Nero, and you get a little bit more background on some of the the uh, stories of Nero. And you get you get some input from uh, scholars, you know, modern scholars on some of the eccentricities of some of these people, and they offer their opinions. Where you know, all right, so there's been speculation that Nero fired Rome, and he was the cause of the fire. There are people that think he wasn't, but, you know, they delve a little bit into, well, maybe he didn't do everything he could have to stop it, or he was, mm -hmm. the, these were his motivations. So they sort of lay the evidence out there based on what we have historically. They offer their opinions, but they invite you to, to come to your own conclusions, okay. which is nice. Interesting. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't play down to the to the viewer, so mm -hmm. it, it treats you like you're an intelligent person, okay. and can make your own decisions, which is very nice. Very cool. Um, it's narrated by uh, Jim O'Brien from The Bold and the Beautiful. Oh, so, okay. Uh, the narration is top notch. The writing is very good, and the research is is spot on. So, Empire Games by Netflix. Awesome. And uh, I think we have some afterthoughts we'll get into real sure. quick before we end the podcast. And I'll turn this over to you, dear. Sure. So uh, we had talked about uh, last week an event that we had gone to. Um, obviously, it was after the fact. So uh, today we're actually, I just wanted to kind of throw this in. Um, unfortunately, by the time our podcast gets uh, out there, it'll have uh, been uh, the event will have ended. Um, but something to think about for next year, if you happen to be a fan of uh, Renaissance fairs, um, there's a bunch of different ones that are within the area. Obviously, the bigger ones are like the New York Renaissance Fair, and you have the Pennsylvania. Uh, Renaissance Fair. The area being the tri-state New Jersey area. Right, the tri-state New Jersey area. But if you, you know, are in Maryland, you know, almost every state has some sort of, you know, Renaissance Fair. Right. And most of the time they start, you know, in the summertime. Um, New Jersey, for a while, had been kind of struggling with finding a permanent home because um, the Pennsylvania one is in a permanent location, the New York one, you know, a lot of uh, the the bigger ones have a set home. Uh, New Jersey has been struggling for <laughs> for a while. Yeah. Uh, the one year we went to one that was in Wildwood, New Jersey, and out, if out on the beach, and that was and warm. if you don't know anything about Wildwood, um, the beach from the boardwalk area is like the longest walk ever. Like it's almost like a mile. You so know, it's like not a crossing mile. Crossing a but... desert to get to the right. beach. Right. Um, so the one year we, we went to a rent fair at Wildwood. Um, and, you know, it was just weird because you're walking on the sand and there was no it shade. It the pirate theme aspect. The, the total though. pirate theme, they were probably the only ones in, in their glory. The horses had a little bit of, problem yeah. you know like it, it wasn't your typical you know when you think of a ren fair you think of being in the woods and you know robin hood and um you know shade <laughs> shade is good in the not a beach uh so that was kind of uh, you know it wasn't the best obviously um and then about 10 years ago the new jersey renaissance fair found a permanent ish home um so it's actually up kind of in central new jersey um it's actually in bordentown um and it's actually held at liberty lake 
campground. Right. Um, so the it's a recurring location, not right. a permanent location. Right. It's they don't a, have permanent structures or anything. Right. Right. Because uh, it is a it's an area where they uh, during the summer they do day camp. Uh, on the weekends, different corporations rent it out for for company picnics. Uh, so it, it's used, you know, quite frequently within the area. When the Ren Fair started, it was only one weekend a year, and it was usually the weekend right before school got out right. and the summer camp. And then a couple of years ago, it became two week weekends a year. And uh, this year, it's actually three weekends. So they actually started uh, May 18th and 19th, and it actually ends this weekend, June 1st and June 2nd. Um, you can usually find coupons online. There's usually a group on of some sort, um, you know, and it's your typical, you know, Renaissance fair. They do have a jousting area. So there's usually jousting events done a couple of times. Obviously, you can get your traditional turkey leg. There are people that dress up. There are uh, vendors that sell clothes and other various things. They have different performers there. Um, you know, one of my favorite who he's kind of local is Shakespeare. So uh, he, he's always there. There's usually a fire eater there. There's various different uh, musical, musical groups. Lights, yeah. There's comedy groups. Um, so you could really spend, you know, the whole day there. Um, and what's nice is with Liberty Lake, it's not too big of an area. It's, it's you know, it's not overwhelming you know and so it's a beautiful area to it is spend there's the a nice too. little lake you know in the center um and they do sell food you know so if you're not into the turkey leg you can get a burger uh or a hot dog or, you know the old burger <laughs> the old burger um i think some of the local vineyards are even there you know selling a lot of craft vendors you have there yeah yeah um, um, like um the one year we were there i finally bought the boots that i needed for, yes for my costume mm-hmm um, which, for a person my size, it's difficult to find, you know, size 16 double wide uh, Renaissance fair boots. Right, right. So, again, it's, it's a fun time. You know, it, what's nice about this area is there's a lot of shade, um, you know, so... If even if it's you know hot out, you can usually find some place to you know to be comfortable. Um, what's always nice is when there's a Renaissance location that actually has restrooms that have running water right. and not porta potties. Because yeah. um, sometimes in some locations that's all that they have. But because you know this is a uh, a, a day camp area, they do have yeah. you know restrooms. And they typically have an ATM on site too. Mm-hmm. If you, right, if because sure some vendors. Cash. Uh, you know, only accept cash. Some right. vendors do now, you know, take credit cards. Uh, so obviously, you know, should always be prepared, you know, bring cash, yeah. you know, just in case. So but it's a nice day. It's a nice experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we look forward to it. Um, you know, we do it sometimes every year, sometimes every other year, um, you know, and we were kind of looking at the weather. Obviously, you know, you don't really want to go when it's going to be a rainy day because you're going to be walking around in mud, even though, you know, most run fairs are rain or shine. Yep. Um, you know, we typically, we like to go when it's dry. So how can people look up more information? On so uh, they have a real easy website to go to. It's www.njrenfair.com. Okay, awesome. I think that's it for us. Uh, just a reminder that you can uh, check out all the podcasts we have on www. www.insightsintothings.com. We post um, our show transcripts. We post our show notes now as well. And all of our contact information is there. And I think that's it for this week, dear. I think it is. Another great podcast. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. We'll talk to everyone later. Have a good one.